Good evening and welcome to another episode of Experience Bar where we're turning video games into cocktails. My name is Jack and I'll be your bartender for this evening, so I show you how to make a drink that proves that education isn't dead, even in the zombie apocalypse. Grandpa's Learn an Elixir from Seven Days to Die. Let's get started. So, Grandpa's Learn an Elixir. Uh, it's pretty useful stuff because in Seven Days to Die you have to learn about things very very quickly to get experience points and ability points and Grandpa's Learning Elixir uh, helps you get those points, helps you survive during those seven day hordes. Thankfully the ingredients are very easy to scavenge, although the recipe itself is locked behind a very high level intellect. But here in the real world we, we don't have, have such limitations. limitations. So here's how you'd make it in real life. First we have our acid. In the game it kind of looks like battery acid which, to be honest, I'm not really keen on using because I don't want to die just yet. So instead, we're using lemon juice. You can also use grapefruit juice for a reason I'll tell you about in a second. So about, you know, 15 mils or a quarter ounce of that. You don't want to add too much. Next up, we've got the red tea. Um, I thought this was going to be uh, South African bush tea or rooibos, which is also called red tea. But turns out it's not. It's actually snow chrysanthemum. Uh, the in-game description says that it's a Chinese secret and the only Chinese red tea that I could find was snow chrysanthemum, which seems to grow very, very rarely in real world, despite it being everywhere in the Seven Days to Die world. But hey, realism in a zombie apocalypse? It's boring anyway. So we're going to fill that up to around about the halfway point. That'll do. Yeah, round right about there. Now you'll note this isn't actually super red, but that's because the red tea in real life is actually more of a yellow. It's called red tea to distinguish it from black tea, which is, you know, like English breakfast. Very, very, very dark. This is less so. Next, we have our beer. The game doesn't stipulate what kind of beer it is. It just says beer. So we have gone with Beer <laughs> from Garage Project. Um, this is the most beer ass beer that you can get. It tastes pretty much like every beer out there. It's light, it's refreshing. You can use a light IPA if you want, but if you can get your hands on this, highly recommend it. Garage Project does really good stuff. So we're gonna fill that almost to the top. Gonna leave a little bit of space. Just let the head die down for a second and top it. And so we come to the final ingredient, which I'm sure people who are playing Seven Days to Die and have crafted Grandpa's Elixir before are looking at me and thinking, are you insane? Yeah, it's dog food. Yeah, it's dog food. Um, and I know you degenerates really want me to open up a can of whiskers and scoop out some jellied horse meat and slap it into here and just ruin it but I have a little bit more self-respect than that. So you'll have to wait for another video for me to embarrass myself in such ways. If you're interested in that sort of thing, I have literally drank out of a, a rubber boot before. Go check out uh, the frog boot episode from about a year back. In the meantime, we're gonna be using bacon instead of dog food, which in my opinion, if you really love your dog, this is what you should be giving them every so often. We're just gonna use that as a nice kind of a garnish deal. And the fifth ingredient, I guess, is the use of a straw. It's not an ingredient, you know, I don't know why I said that, but here you go. Just add a straw to it. Metal, if you can, don't use plastic, because fuck plastic. Chuck it on in there. Now in the game it is actually served in a little hip flask, like a little whiskey flask, but you don't get to see how cool it looks. Um, and also hip flasks are kind of boring things to serve things in. I prefer this in a nice Collins glass. You get more tea and beer in it. But yeah, uh, that is the Grandpa's Learn and Elixir from Seven Days to Die. Here's to all our patrons who uh, help make these drinks happen. Here's to Alex Cruz, our specific patron of this week. Thanks for the drink. So, um, Grandpa's Learn and Elixir, it actually kind of tastes a little bit like a shandy. I mean, when you're mixing, which if you haven't had shandy before, it, it's beer and lemonade equal parts. And whenever you mix something that's equal parts, they kind of end up tasting uh, very similar to each other. But to be honest, I actually prefer this over a shandy. Firstly, you don't have that overpowering sweetness from the lemonade, which blasts all of the beer flavor out. Instead, you have this red tea, which its florality really, really adds to the beer flavor. If you're using the grapefruit juice, which I mentioned before, and an IPA, those match up beautifully. In this kind of plainer version that we've made, the lemon juice just adds a little bit more refreshness to it. Refreshness, is that a word? I guess it is now. It makes it a little bit more refreshing, basically. Uh, the bacon, to be honest, 
doesn't really add too much to it. When you go to sip, you do get mm, kind of a, a salty smell. It, it is a little bit of a uh, incongruence between the kind of sour, savory flavors here and the saltiness up here. Um, but to be honest, for a drink adapted almost one for one from a video game, it's not half bad. I didn't have to take too much creative license with this. Give it a go and tell me what you think as well. I quite like it and I can imagine sitting on the porch having a sip of this uh, and desperately trying to avoid the screamers coming my way. Thanks so much for joining me. I've been Jack Stone. This has been Experience Bar uh, and that was Grandpa's Learn and Elixir from Seven Days to Die. If you'd like to keep up with us, you can check us out on Twitter and Instagram. We've also got a subreddit and a Discord if you want to play with the crew. And we do have a Patreon as well with some cool exclusive recipes that uh, only our donators get. So consider heading over on over there and chucking us a Duke's token. That's it from us. We are creating new content every two weeks, so keep an eye out for us in your notifications. Hope to see you then, but until then, cheers.